Edgar Wright on your Teller Joy? Why not? Showtime. What's up, everybody? It's your girl Nita, your favorite diva, and I'm back to review The Last Night in Soho. Yes, it is written and directed by Edgar Wright. There is a co writer listed as well, Christy Wilson Carnes, and she is known for the Oscar nominated 1917 and writing on Penny Dreadful. Edgar Wright is known for Shaun of the Dead. Baby Driver, Sky Pilgrim versus the World. He actually has a vast broad filmography in comparison to genre. I will I and with this installment, I'd like to say that he likes to be challenged. Like I think he's not going to be someone that stays in um, the wheelhouse of horror. Um I think that he has a unique voice and that he likes to do a little bit of it all, baby. So I think he likes a challenge. And I think he went into this with that same attitude. The movie is starring Anya Taylor-Joy. You know her from Queen's Gambit. Thomason McKenzie. You may remember her from Jojo Rabbit. And in M. Night Shyamalan's Ode. We got Matt Smith from The Crown. We have Diana Rigg, darling. Oh my God, the late Diana Rigg from Game of Thrones, the Queen of Thorns, baby. Yes, her. Oh my God, her last performance on to the big screen. It's classified as a drama horror mystery. And I, I on the other hand, will classify it as a psychological thriller, drama, horror, and mystery. I mean, it played with a lot of different genres. And I think that's what I really enjoy about the movie going experience is just being taken and shifted into all these different genres, playing with a little bit of everything and just having a great experience, you know? It clocks in at one hour and 56 minutes and the synopsis reads, an inspiring fashion designer is mysteriously able to enter the 1960s where she encounters a dazzling wannabe singer. But the glamour is not all it appears to be and the dreams of the past start to crack and splinter into something darker. And that is all I'm going to say because this is your spoiler-free review. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, if you're returning, you already know what we do. I watch movies so you don't have to. I tell you the good, the bad, and a little bit of in-between with no spoilers, of course. And I'll let you know whether or not you should know or go see it in theaters. I went in totally blind for this film. So I think... I don't I do trailer reactions. So I was just surprised that I did. You know, it that actually turned out to be a good thing for me. So I had absolutely no expectations. I got some buzz about Anya Taylor Joy and Edgar Wright. And I said, okay, I'm down. Let's let's check it out. Let's start off with the good. This movie started out good. Excellent even. I love the story that they were crafting. Oh, it was so good. I was so impressed with how immersive the first and second act was. And I was truly in awe of what I was witnessing. I was very impressed with the camera work, um, the production of this movie, the editing, the mirror work. It's like an interesting zest and zeal that it all brought, like, especially in the second act, once we get into these fever dreams that she's having. It just immerses you so deeply, like I was just totally swept up into this world. We're in London's in the 60s. And yes, I loved it. <clears throat> Thomason um, McKinley's character, Ellie has the ability to see spirits. And we learned that early on. Um, I believe her mother suffered with schizophrenia and she actually killed herself. And so um, it kind of gave me some of the shining type vibes. Like, you know, when when you're the, the one with the, what's it called? The magic or the, the, the shine. 
you know, it was like one of those type things. Um, this movie had a lot of social commentary on womanhood and um, being a young woman um, going off to college somewhere you don't know. Um, and just that being vulnerable, being a vulnerable citizen out there and just, you know, the world will chew you up and spit you out. So it's, this is probably all thanks to the contribution of Christy Wilson Carnes um, depicting the, 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 the dangerous underbelly of London in the 60s. Um, <clears throat> it was definitely told through the eyes of a woman. And I think that actually shines through for um, the first and second act for sure. Um, I love the needle drops, y'all. Like, I, it gives me uh, feelings of the music that my grandmother, my great grandmother used to listen to. The needle drops were great. The soundtrack was amazing. The 60s flair worked very well, which brings me to highlighting the beautiful, haunting performance of Anya Taylor Joy. Um, she was not the lead of the movie. Um, Thomas and McKinney, Ellie's character is, but she comes in in the second act and she is just fantastic. Her personality was jumping off the screen. Thomas and um, McKinley's performance was good as well. She played off of Anya. She brought out a balance with her because Thomas and McKinley was very, very timid. And Anya Teller Joy was not. So it was like she was living vicariously through her. And it started out such uh, like the fantical fantasy element that was going on in the 60s and everything was popping and dazzling and everything. Then all of a sudden, oh, y'all, it takes a turn. And when I tell you it takes a turn, like it was like some scares that jumped my ass out the seat. It was it was a lot, but Anya was the standout for me. Um, she played the one wanna be singer searching for her come up in this nasty industry. So yes, and so, and so this brings me to the bad. <clears throat> I wanted to be very very vague. I want you to I want you guys to go in there and have the same experience that I did, but I just want to give you like a little something. Okay, so the bad. Some of the characters seem to be a little one note. Um, there were a slew of those, uh, mainly the antagonists um, of the film. Matt Smith, uh, the luminous villain figure, um, Rebecca Herod, uh, Herod as one of the antagonists as well. Um, Michael Ajo, um, he was her love interest and it kind of felt a little flat for me besides them having no chemistry at all. You know, just his timid betrayal of his character was just a little off-putting to me. So anyway, um, some of the story beats when it, when it shifts into madness felt a little bit repetitive and overdone. And I saw this in Dolby. And so it was just so crazy and so much coming at you. And you could see some of those things in the trailer. Um, I couldn't follow between reality and this fever dream it was like it was it like it said in the synopsis it breaks reality and so it was a lot to the point where i almost kind of was tuning out because i had like a headache like it was just bothering me in that fanatical way so anyway despite them setting up a more sophisticated mystery um with elements of the shining and all this social commentary it feels like the third act fell right into the regular stereotypical horror film that kind of leaves the plot a bit underwhelming because I, I i don't think i got the payoff that i was really expecting i really was expecting something or hoping for something more magical i just wanted to say just a little bit more something but I wanted more of the lore, the rules. Like, I'm trying to figure out what was happening between Ellie's character while she was moving into these fever dreams and it was meshing with her reality. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, what? Who said that? 
I don't know. So anyway, <clears throat> with that being said, before I give you my overall thoughts on the last night in Soho, why don't you follow me on my social media? It's right there. While I was a bit underwhelmed with the ending, it does not take away from the ambitious swing in the storytelling that it tackled in the beginning of the story, the first and second half of the story. Um, the vivacious look of the 60s is stunning. The masterful editing. Oh, my God. The gorgeous soundtrack. It, it just, it had like this feel. Like, it, I mean, it, was, it wasn't like it was just... Like it was just, it had a momentum to it. It just, it, it, it didn't feel like a two hour film because it, it, it kind of just keeps with the music and all of these things. It was just so nice. Um, the 60s absolutely leaped off the screen. There were some fantastic music numbers in there as well. And I just thought it was a pretty well made film. A lot of style, a lot of, lot of story, a lot of twists and turns. <laughs> So I give Last Night in Soho four out of five stars and definitely say, go see it. You know, I feel like where art is always so subjective, why don't you just go see it and see whether or not you like it yourself? Or you can wait for it to come on streaming. But I do recommend a watch at least once. I don't think that I would re-watch this unless I wanted to see if I can catch something from something maybe I missed. But tell me your fate if you like Edgar Wright put it down in the comments let me know what is your favorite movie of his like I said his filmography is kind of vast so you just kind of let me know what you like okay put it in the comments all right that is my opinion I thought it was a very well made film and so I really want to give it its kudos and so if there's nothing else remember I'm Nita your favorite diva and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And you make sure you come back. Bye.